In 2022, the Supreme Court of India had put the sedition law on hold, observing the Section 124A of the IPC was not in tune with the current social milieu and was intended for when India was under British rule. Now, a year later, the Law Commission of India has recommended that the sedition law be retained. In its 88-page report, the Law Commission, headed by Justice Ritu Raj Avasti, has also proposed that the law be strengthened by increasing the jail term. So, what are the Law Commission's key recommendations on the sedition law? Why has it argued that the colonial law should be retained? And why have many criticised the report for lacking depth? To put all of this into perspective, I'll be joined by Apar Gupta, lawyer and director at the Internet Freedom Foundation. First, let's look at how the law defines sedition. Section 124A defines sedition as anyone who brings or attempts to bring hatred contempt or excites or attempts to excite disaffection towards the government. This may be by words, written or spoken, signs or visible representation. The colonial era law, which was used by the British to target its critics, has become a tool to curb dissent in independent India. Section 124A has been routinely invoked against journalists, against protesters like those protesting against the Kudanklam nuclear plant, and even against school children in Karnataka for staging a play. Last year, the the Union Government told the Supreme Court that it would reconsider the law. The Law Commission submitted its report in May this year and has made three recommendations. One, broadening the definition of sedition. The Law Commission has proposed amending the law to include the words tendency to incite violence or cause public disorder. It defines tendency as mere inclination to incite violence or cause public disorder rather than proof of actual violence or imminent threat to violence. The panel's recommendation is based on the Supreme Court's 1962 judgment in the Kedarnath Singh versus the State of Bihar case. The top court had then held that the sedition law can be invoked only when words or actions lead to or tend to lead to violence or public disorder. The Commission argues that the present reading of Section 124A is vague and confusing and that adding the word tendency in the law would bring about more clarity in the interpretation, understanding and usage of the provision. 2. Enhancing Jail Term the panel recommends strengthening the law by increasing the jail term to seven years. Punishment under Section 124A is either life imprisonment or three years imprisonment, with the minimum punishment being a fine. The Commission says there is a glaring disparity in the punishment prescribed for sedition compared to other offences against the state. So it suggests increasing the jail term to seven years to bring it on par with the other offences. Three procedural guidelines to prevent the law's misuse. The Law Commission proposes laying down procedural safeguards to prevent any misuse of Section 124A. It recommends that an FIR be registered only after an inspector rank officer conducts a preliminary inquiry and gets the permission of the government, state or union. The Commission's 88-page report also gives its reasons to retain the sedition law. It provides three main justifications. One, to safeguard India's unity and integrity. The report says that there are a myriad threats to India's security. Maoist extremism, insurgency in the Northeast, terrorism in Jammu and Kashmir, and separatist activities such as the Khalistan movement. The report also goes on to say that social media propagates radicalization against India and hatred towards the government. It argues that retaining the sedition law will help combat these anti-national and secessionist elements as it seeks to protect the elected government from attempts to overthrow it. 2. Colonial legacy isn't a valid ground for its repeal. The Commission argues that the entire legal system of India is a colonial legacy, so merely claiming that a law is colonial doesn't make it anachronistic. 3. Realities differ in every country. One of the biggest arguments to repeal the sedition law is that many countries, including the US and the UK, have already done so. But the panel argues that repealing Section 124A, merely because other countries have already done so, is ignoring India's ground realities. It also claims that some of the most advanced democracies have merely effected cosmetic changes in their sedition law by merging it with their anti-terror legislation. Many legal experts have said that the report lacks depth and has failed to engage with the criticism surrounding the sedition law. Apar Gupta, lawyer and director at the Indian Freedom Foundation, helps break down the issues with the Law Commission's report. I believe that 
the uh, the amendments which have been recommended by the law commission will lead to a uh, uh, yeah, very very uh, widespread chilling effect and will silence of what it's left of dissent the basis of my assertion is that in a recent uh, report published by common cause as well as lok niti csds about 2 out of 3 indians are already afraid of voicing their political social and religious views on social media for threats of legal prosecution in this environment of fear increasing the severity as well as the scope and ambit of an offense which has been put to so much abuse as well as use to chill dissent will only be making bad things worse i i think this law commission report is a uh, it's, it's, it's 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 very uh, it's very shallow it doesn't have a depth of research uh, it doesn't have a methodology which is uh, fairly uh, uh, which is well grounded in that sense and what do i mean by this let me come to some specifics if you look at the law commission reports in the 60s the 70s the 80s and 90s these were involved public consultative processes these were sent questionnaires to different high courts ask lawyers and bar associations what is the law what should we change none of this has been done secondly the public consultation process which was started by the 21st law commission when it floated a consultation paper on the law of sedition also solicited public responses these public responses were sent in fact they were sent by the internet freedom foundation they were sent by a lot of people and it doesn't seem they have been engaged or considered well this is not even mentioned this is not even considered reasoned and then disregarded it is like it never happened okay and when you look at the data based fields as well which are there in terms of establishing either there is abuse or sedition how often it is used does it result in conviction the law commission has gone to rather than querying exact statistical data from the national crime records bureau the ministry of home affairs or asking different state governments it has taken this these statistics from a article in a leading indian newspaper and i'm okay with that to some extent but you need to be a little much more granular in your data the breadth of the report actually seems to be a assertion of national security paranoia so i think conceptually the report is very shallow and it is very poorly reasoned it does not follow a proper methodology and this shows through its eventual recommendations which seem to be born out of paranoia many have criticized the law commission's recommendation to include the word tendency in the provision saying that it not only expands the offense but also increases the scope for misuse is that your assessment as well so uh, i i completely agree with this uh, criticism that uh, rather than making the uh, provision uh, much more tailored it is uh, being made much more expansive and uh, see uh, a tendency or a mere inclination to incite violence or cause public disorder uh, reminds one of the language which was used in the much used and abused section 66a that provision by itself was uh, held to be unconstitutional by the supreme court i think uh, the same uh, uh, form of uh, linguistic expansion in the ingredients of sedition by itself will give enormous discretionary powers to a police officer to target individuals by asserting that uh, that their statements tend to cause tend to cause public disorder rather than actually cause essentially oh, who are these people it's going to be students journalists it's going to be people who are critics of the government people who are looking to organize uh, protests dharnas which are at the very root of the freedom of speech and expression guaranteed by the constitution and here quite often from what we have also seen has been that 
quite often criticism of the government or certain public officials or some people who are held to a very high status in indian society on the official apparatus like a prime minister criticism of people like him has led to cases of sedition and this just makes it easier because the word is tendency the law commission has recommended increasing the jail term to bring it on par with other offenses against the state what do you make of his reasoning i think the justification which is given that because there are other offenses under the indian penal code which prov- provide for a higher uh, term of imprisonment compared to sedition and uh, we are only uh, removing a inconsistency fails is to take into account that uh, maybe uh, criminalization of speech based offenses does not need to be this severe i think the what the law commission has fundamentally done in this case uh, in its recommendations has not been to study the global developments where the offense itself has been uh, removed from the statute books completely uh, i think uh, increasing it to 7 years by itself uh, has the uh, intended uh, sorry unintended uh, effect of uh, ensuring that people who are accused in cases of sedition and have been under trials which means that the police arrests them even before they are convicted and the trial does not take place for a period of let's say 4 years they can still be kept behind bars and people today are being uh, prosecuted under offenses of sedition and there they are under trials for periods more than 3 years and we've seen that in some very prominent cases which have been reported in the press Will procedural safeguards actually help curb the misuse of the sedition law? See this firstly it's important to understand that the safeguards as they are articulated by the law commission are not contained in a schedule or are not articulated as a expression which can immediately be changed in the code of criminal procedure by itself. So one should question the intent of the law commission by itself in saying that hey we can come up with some safeguards and this is what they may look like but actually not give a specified and clear form to that safeguard. The second is that the nature of the safeguard is that we are going to increase the the, the the scrutiny prior to uh, initiation of the case and have it done by a person who's a senior police officer uh, so that could curb abuse and what this flies in the face is of experience as well as logic because uh, if one looks at even for instance the information technology act it said that notwithstanding anything contained in the code of criminal procedure a police officer not below the rank of uh, originally this was dep- deputy sep- superintendent of police which is a high uh, post and then subsequently it was am- amended to inspector shall investigate any offense under the act which meant that fir could not be filed but they ended up being filed and wh- one also uh, does not account for the fact that the 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 law commission itself says that quite often uh, at a certain point it says in its report it says that the abuse of the sedition law uh, it says the sedition law is great it's abused and who is who is essentially at fault for the abuse are usually in the media portrayed as politicians who uh, spur the initiation of a case against a, a person who's made a statement who say that hey go, uh, go please go and file a case uh, start a criminal investigation and then in the in, in the subsequent line the law commission says that but it's not only the politicians or the public officials it's actually the police which does it and the solution which it's providing now is that let's let's just increase scrutiny by the police itself and have it done by a much more senior officer and all our problems will go away and again it does not prescribe a very very clear form to it i think the entire report uh, is a product of paranoia because it devotes more sections and analysis to all the national security threats which india faces faces today as if we face a existential threat and we are not a secure confident democratic country what do you make of the law commission's reasons to retain the sedition law the commission has said that the fact that other countries have repealed the law or that it is a colonial law aren't valid arguments i think the the, the law commission has not understood that the critique of law which is colonial uh, is not only a assessment of the 
date on which a law has been made but the transformative nature of us now being a constitutional republic and it is crouched behind the reasoning provided in the kedarnath case but it has not taken into account all the cases subsequent to that which have increased the amount of uh, the rigor of the judicial standard in assessment restrictions of free expression for instance it's not taken into account the shreya singhal case in which a central statute was struck down in which there are very clear tests which are given on how and when the legislature can restrict free expression it's not taken that into account what are the tests to be applied it doesn't fill within 192 is it reasonable by itself today and uh, i think uh, uh, while it's, it's it's articulated a very clever argument that just because a law is old doesn't mean it's bad i think the law commission should also look at the other laws which are being changed today because it is being said that they are old and hence they are bad there's an entire project on simplification and repeal of laws which has been undertaken by the union government by the ministry of law and justice which the law commission itself has collaborated in uh, so there is a huge amount of inconsistency and it seems like a very self serving argument by the law commission to say that just because it's old doesn't mean it's colonial and just because it's old does not mean it's bad i think we should spend greater amount of time analyzing that how these foreign countries also have held that sedition is incompatible with their constitutions and international human rights com- uh, conventions we need to remember india is a party to the udhr and the iccpr and the standards under them as have been explained by rapporteurs for free expression are clearly against the offense of sedition the offense of sedition as its very root is articulating a lack of lack of affection towards the crown the state by itself and in a modern democratic country just because you don't love the state by itself should not be a crime it should be preconditioned on very very severe actionable uh, statements which either lead to uh, uh, the complete forms of hate speech such as erosion of a person's dignity or a group that enables violence or actual violence those tests are very different today and this is why i think the law of sedition by itself is unconstitutional right now also this is not only an assessment by me the supreme court last year passed an order staying the operation of the law of sedition and this was done because it in its order reached a finding that it does seem to be incompatible with our constitutional protections we've heard what a legal expert has to say but what about the government as far as the government is concerned union law minister arjun ram megwal has said that the report is just one of the steps in the extensive consultative process he also clarified that the report is not binding and that a final decision will be taken after consulting all stakeholders that's all from me for this week but before i go a quick reminder to support independent journalism you can do so by becoming a member of the news minute also subscribe to our youtube channels and as always if you like this video hit the like button and share this video with your friends